man, what the fuck? I've just begun my master's program in math this fall, and I'm already off to a blistering start. I've failed the majority of my exams so far, and have begun to seriously question whether I made the right choice to pursue grad school. Spending dozens of afternoons and office hours to continue fumbling around with the topics, and studying 65 to 80 hours a week to achieve less than mediocre results has begun to take its toll. Not that I'm really surprised that getting a degree in STEM is hard, but I'm seeing how the rigor of the subject ended up driving people way smarter than me to the brink of sanity. The type of math that I focus on is the type that Will Hunting did in Good Will Hunting, which I'm guessing the writers chose because it can hypothetically be done without a lot of background in the subject. Which I find to be kind of bullshit because I have a degree in math and have no fucking clue what's going on a majority of the time. At least I know that Will Hunting truly was a genius and a prodigy to be able to do the math that he did without bursting into tears at least once during the film. Sometimes I wish that I had the intelligence like Will's character to be so highly regarded in such a historically challenging field. But after glancing around at my peers, I realized that I'll never be even remotely close to the pinnacle of mathematicians. I've desperately struggled over the past few years to accept that I'm not the best at math. Not even within the walls of my classroom. Not even in arm's distance, usually. Constantly comparing my grades to those who outperform me has sent me into a spiral of self-doubt and has severely hindered my ability to appreciate how much I've truly progressed. Although, getting a 40% on a midterm when the person to your left gets a 97 and the person to your right gets a 94 feels less like progress and more like, oh fuck, I should be in a classroom with pads on the walls getting served apple juice instead of this one. This feeling of self-insinuated unhappiness did, and still does, loom over me for the fact that I know I'll never academically achieve what some of my classmates will. Hypothetically, I could just work even harder to overcome this insecurity, but I find complaining about my problems does more for me emotionally rather than spending that extra time. In summary, being second sucks, but sometimes that's reality. A turning point for me was when I realized that many of my classmates doing better than me typically have more experience and much more passion for the subject than I. My journey of doing advanced math didn't start until college. While a good number of my classmates were involved in math competitions and other mathematical programs during high school and sometimes even earlier. I mention this because it seems like my relationship with the subject is more transactional and that I found a subject during college that interests me that will set me up for a good career, instead of a passion to continue pursuing. I find math to be an interesting challenge, but not enough that I find it necessary to dedicate my life to it. People who seem to be smarter may just be smarter, but it's more probable that they either enjoy the subject more or were exposed to it earlier. You can spend 14 hours a day trying to learn the symmetries of the octahedron, but if you don't want to, you never will. Despite my struggles in math, there always seem to be others enduring the same troubles and cycles of self-doubt that I experience. The most comforting thing to see when I struggle is someone else struggling more than me. Which sucks for them, but it's great for me because it confirms I'm not just some idiot stumbling through the chapters of a textbook. It brings comfort to me knowing that I'm not in this alone. Someone in close proximity is suffering through the same material even more than I am. But a majority of the time, I end up assuming that everyone else in the class has everything figured out, since communication in the math department is very minimal, even though I know that's not true. This idea comes from assuming that only my life is complex and volatile, while everyone else's is simple, in an attempt to feel entitled to some sense of individuality. It's kind of like how we see ants. We're so much larger than them that we forget that they live in their own complex three-dimensional world with its own intricacies. This contrived analogy is meant to demonstrate that we all struggle with similar problems, even if we don't realize it. We just have to come together to overcome them. 
Everyone has been completely lost while learning math at some point. And if you think you haven't, you're lying. No matter who you are, you've sat at a desk looking at a test with your face in your hands, waiting for time to run out, envisioning blowing your head off on repeat. My experience in obtaining a degree in math consisted of me being confused for 95% of the time, and the other 5% either making some shit up to get partial credit, or explaining my half-baked intuition on a subject to someone that regrets that they asked me. Award-winning mathematician Andrew Wiles once gave a succinct analogy that I find to ring true. It goes something like, I could best describe my experience of doing mathematics in terms of entering a dark mansion. You go into the first room, and it's dark. Completely dark. You stumble around, bumping into furniture. Gradually, you learn where each piece of furniture is. And finally, after six months or so, you find the light switch and turn it on. Suddenly, it's all illuminated, and you can see exactly where you are. Then you enter the next dark room. It brings me great relief that someone as smart as him struggles with similar ideas. Basically, so I can lean on the fact that if he can't figure math out, how am I supposed to figure it out either? I came up with an analogy of my own that's a bit more accurate to my own experience. You wake up in the middle of a cornfield, stripped naked and completely lost, and you're given an hour to find your way out, or the earth implodes. His description is more elegant, and definitely less children of the corn-esque, but what I mean to say is that being completely lost and in panic is most of the journey. But failure and panic are a part of life. And while we do our best to forget it, avoid it, and deny it, working through it and improving delivers the greatest rewards and strongest sense of purpose. This leaves me with a question. Do I continue working hard at something I don't truly enjoy to put myself in a better place financially, or do I accept the sunk cost to pursue a new venture? I don't know the answer, but finding the solution is just part of the journey.